But there's this level of also going on the offensive with the gospel and saying, Jesus is better. He's bigger than your sin. He's infinitely better. Hey everybody, welcome to Contra Thoughts. My name is Richard and Tim Keller is at it again. All right, hey everybody. The show is called Contra Thoughts. This channel is Contra Mundum Pro Mundo. Uh, that briefly is Contra Mundum is against the world, Pro Mundo is for the world. So against the world, but for the world. That comes from, partly from Athanasius, fourth century church father, who, and many others have said it over the years, being Contra Mundum, being against the world, not being adapted to the world, uh, not being part of the world in the sense of its system, its ideologies, and everything else. And I, and you, I hope, as if you are a Christian, should be that. But then I add, and want to be, because I was also once in the world, as were you, in the world. And if somebody didn't share the gospel, or challenge you in something, or share a sermon with you, or say, hey, read this book, or ask you if you were really a Christian... They were, they were being against you, but for you. And that's the goal of this channel, against the world, for the world. Contra Mundum, for Mundo. And this is just the uh, weekly show that I do, Contra Thoughts, where I talk about different things. Today we're going to be talking about Tim Keller. Uh, I am a husband and a father. Um, I am a pastor of a small Southern Baptist church. Don't worry, we're not woke. That's our little tagline we had to add recently. No. Uh, <laughs> but it might. we might need to, I don't know. And I'm trying to fight, as it were, kindly. Uh, 11th Commandment was my last episode. And that's where, you know, you shall be nice, quote unquote. And I, I don't want to be nice. I don't want to not be nice in the sense of, you know, not to do something just to do it or not do it. Because, you know, it's the opposite and I'm contrary or whatever. See, contrary, contra. There it is. Latin's everywhere. Anyway. No, I... Things need to be addressed. Things need to be brought to the fire of the gospel, drag the feet over from Big Eva or the culture uh, or just um, assumptions about theology, ideas that even in the church, conservative Christians, we believe, uh, but often will uh, not really give much time to or even intramural debates between brother and sister about baptism or about uh, salvation or end times. We don't really think much about it or we just kind of eat up whatever the popular motion, notion is at the time. And I really want to examine that. I'm going to look, be looking at more of that uh, as far as theology goes and kind of comparing and contrasting certain things uh, as time comes in the new year. So look forward to that. Tim Keller, if you clicked on this, probably for Tim Keller uh, or because of this sweet pattern. This is one of my favorite shirts. Uh, you also notice, if you've been watching videos, drop a comment if you notice anything different about my set. Yeah, I know. It's actually pretty easy because if you watch another video like right before this, you could tell. Anyway, Tim Keller, infamous Big Eva guy, pastor, was a pastor. He's not a pastor anymore. I think he retired a number of years ago. He's in New York City. If you don't know who Tim or Timothy, some people will call him that, same name, obviously. Timothy Keller, Tim Keller. I've always known as Tim Keller. I've listened to several of his sermons. Uh, I was, when I was in seminary at Southern Seminary a number of years ago, I think it was my first semester, I listened to some of his sermons for a preaching class. Uh, I've read his some of his books. I've listened to interviews. I'm not like a Tim Keller expert by any means. However, I do and have appreciated him over the years. That being said, <clears throat> I would say that there's been a, a, and track with me, an apocalypse. And no, not in the standard, you know, Bruce Willis, Armageddon, Deep Impact, late 90s movies, everything's blowing up and, you know, uh, Mark of the Beast, that whole thing. I'm not, it's not, that's not really what an apocalypse is. An apocalypse is just a revealing, uh, a revelation, as it were. It's an unveiling. And I think really the last 20 months to really three years, four years, we've really seen a lot, especially with uh, the BLM stuff coming in and coming out. And now obviously who talks about BLM anymore, right? In December, 2021. But a year ago, oh, it was everywhere, right? Especially in June of 2020. And, you know, it's, it's, it's 
fascinating how the news cycle works or doesn't work. Um, but further still with that, with immigration, with Donald Trump, with a lot of things, Tim Keller, Russell Moore, uh, David Platt, uh, Matt Chandler, a lot of guys and a lot of other lower names, quote unquote, have really revealed their hands. They were, I think, holding cards that were not biblical. Now, of course, they would say they're biblical and we're all about justice and we're all about equity and we're all about, you know, uh, we'll see here, power, um, seminary presidents have said that. Uh, Southeastern, for example, probably the wokest of the six seminaries in the Southern Baptist Convention, has said that. You know, Danny Aiken, well, that's all about giving up power. I, I as this, and people identifying, I am a, you know, cisgendered white male, blah, 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 blah. I just had a church this last week uh, out in Portland, and it was all this, like, inclusive whatever stuff. And the I identify as this. And it's like, this is a church? Are you serious? Like, why? <laughs> I mean, who cares? Just, you're, you, are you identifying in Christ? Do you know the creator of the universe? That's the question. That's the question. Not whether you have more melanin, less melanin, whether you like sports or not, whether you like top ramen cooked in the microwave or on the stovetop, or you just eat it dry like I did when I was in seventh grade, or you think it's disgusting because it is disgusting. It's great for 12-year-olds, but you know, whatever. Why are we identifying with all these things? That's what the world does. And that's where I want to be against the world for that sake. That's part of this channel. The, the main, really, the main part of this channel is being against the world, but for it. And say, that's not right. You don't need to stay there. Jesus is so much better. Jesus and his word, his gospel of redemption through himself, not through us and our works, but through himself, that's so infinitely better. Copy. Recently, Tim Keller tweeted on December 19th, two days ago, midday. The heart of the gospel is the cross. Amen, Tim Keller. And the cross is all about giving up power. The cross is all about giving up power. The heart of the gospel is the cross, okay? And then if it leads, then the next thing is the cross is all about giving up power. Well... Is that true? Now, I understand it's Twitter. I'm not on Twitter. I haven't been on Twitter for years. Don't look for me on Twitter. I am on Gab, though, uh, and I am on Parler. I signed up for that uh, like over a year ago, and they got canned, right, you know, because of Amazon. Oh, no, you breached your contract or some nonsense. <laughs> the leftists hate dissent, by the way. If you didn't already pick up on that, if you didn't already know that the leftists, the commie ideology of everybody's equal except for this, you know, chosen elite elect group up here of you know the 0.00001%. They hate you. They hate me. They don't like us at all. They're godless. And until we start knowing that, until we stop believing the lie that Bill Gates and all, you know, Jeff Bezos and uh even Elon Musk, I mean all these people and those are just the figureheads, right? There's people behind them and I'm not talking about I don't care. I don't care who they are. There's a they, and they don't like the common man. They don't like humanity uh, because their father, Satan, the devil, the dragon of old, also does not like humanity. But that's not what this is really about. This is about Tim Keller. And this is about tweets and communication, or lack thereof, of pastors and theologians and guys like him. Tim Keller says the cross is about giving up power. Well, God demonstrates his own love towards us while we were still sinners. Christ died for us. That's Romans 5.8. God demonstrates his love towards us while we were still sinners. I just preached on this. And I'll drop a little comment if you guys want on uh, the YouTube channel. I'll put that in the description as well for my church. There's not a lot there, but there's some if you're curious about my preaching. While we were still sinners, while we remained in sin, while we were still in sin, Christ died for us. Not this bootstrappy Christianity, not that, well, once I clean up my act, well, you know, once we were this, well, you know, you're really religious, though. You've given me 10% over the course of so many years. You've prayed. Your parents are Christians. No, none of these caveats, none of these distinctions. While we were still in sin, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. 
But what I really want to focus on, that's just a wonderful verse. I want just extra credit. No charge. I don't know. I don't know. This isn't a test. There's no extra credit. 1 Corinthians 1.17. There's a few verses. For Christ did not send me, that is Paul, to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Amen. Not with cleverness of speech. Oh, Paul's already, uh, he's already got some people in mind. This is why the Bible's so amazing, by the way. Because the Bible speaks to people now. It spoke to people 200 years ago. It spoke to people 800 years ago. It spoke to people 1900 years ago. And it will speak to people 500 years from now. These things are able to do this because it's God's word. It's not just man's word, but it's God's word. It's God breathed out. It's the spirit. It's the breath of God moving men, speaking from the Holy Spirit, carried along, not in a trance and not generating the word of God and making it the Bible, quote unquote, making it infallible. And this is where Bible, uh, the Bible must be seen and believed as inerrant and infallible and, and so on. If you say, well, it's infallible, it's not inerrant, well, it's just, you know, it's this. well, all you're doing is you're diminishing the scripture. And then you have zero bounds. There's, you're driving on this road, windy road at night with zero markers, zero anything. You don't even have headlights that really work very well. And you're just hoping you don't die. There's, there's nothing guardrails, there's no caution, there's no anything, speed limit, yellow signs, the arrows, nothing. That's what it's like when you start questioning the scripture and say, well, you know, I really love Jesus, but I tolerate Paul. Now, the Old Testament's a little, uh, this is really Jewish, this whole thing. So I'm just going to kind of lump this off and just ignore this. I mean, this is okay. Or I'm going to dwell all on the book of Revelation. Or I'm going to dwell all on the book of Acts. Or I'm going to look at all these miracles and ignore everything else. Whatever your pet peeve is, people do it all the time. Back to Corinthians. Not with cleverness of speech, so that the cross of Christ would not would not be made to no effect. And sometimes Bibles have the little headline, the wisdom of God, verse 18. But the word of the cross, here it is. This is what we're pushing back against. Tim Keller, read your Bible, buddy. Read your Bible. Probably won't watch this, but read your Bible. Because you're, you, even if you believe this, your tweet doesn't make any sense. It's contradictory. There's another word, contradictory, contra. Being against that, it's opposite. It's oil and water, they don't mix. It's not the same thing. Preach the gospel, but to preach the gospel, oh, excuse me, sorry. Uh, cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the understanding of those who have understanding. I will confound. Where is the wise person? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? He has not made, has God not made the foolish, made foolish the wisdom of the world? Since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not come to know God, God was pleased through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. 1 Corinthians 17 through 21. Foolishness. It's foolish, right? And the world will look at you, and the world will look at me, and maybe somebody in the world, and this channel's for everybody, not just for Christians. I hope other belie unbelievers will watch this. Other people will watch this. Share this with your friends, by the way, and drop a comment. Let me know. And uh, do subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, it helps the content, it helps build the channel, it tells the algorithm what's kind of like you're getting momentum and going, and the more people pushing it, the more it goes. So if you found this helpful, please subscribe, please share, and like. I'd really appreciate it. But verse 18, and I could talk about this whole passage for an hour, but really the first verse 18 is what I want to look at. For the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved. Notice the being saved, right? So there's this process, not the process of salvation that uh, you're going to get heaven, quote unquote, one day, you know, it's kind of vernacular, but you're being delivered also from this present evil world. So you are come to Christ, you come to Christ, you are saved, you die that moment, you're in Christ's hand, you're in heaven, right? Eternal glory. But there's also this process being saved. Oftentimes people also refer to it as sanctification. 
correct me if I'm wrong on that, being saved, it is the power of God. So the gospel, just like Romans tells us, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation for all who believe, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And so, Tim Keller, the cross, the heart of the gospel is the cross, uh uh-huh. And the cross is all about giving up power. What the crap are you talking about? That doesn't make any sense at all. Now, I understand. I understand what he's trying to do. I understand what he's trying to do. He's trying to show off, as Tim Keller's been doing for years. He's trying to be cool and and intricate and 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 wise and oh, just kind of rough. There's a lot of rough edges. This Richard guy, that 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 guy over there, this guy, he doesn't know who I am. But as an example, right? You're too. Uh, you got to be more nuanced. You know, we got to unpack this and really, you know, we really got to love our neighbor. We really got to just, you know, be with people and really do, uh, uh, and there's, there's these certain things that Big Eva, and he's certainly Big Eva, does. Certain things that they just like to do, and basically they, they soften the gospel. They wussify it, if you want to be street terms, or you could use another term, but I'm not going to. And they, 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 just, they just neuter it. They take off all the power. They forget, or they don't remind us, that we're at war. That there is an enemy, and he wants to destroy you. He wants to ruin your marriage. He wants to ruin your testimony. He wants you to be lazy at work. He wants you to show up. He wants you to blow up in anger. He wants you to fall and have a moral failing. He wants pastors to die off. He wants them to not have any power from preaching the gospel from their pulpits. He doesn't want anybody doing evangelism on the street or online like this. He doesn't want people talking about the scripture. He hates you. And as I mentioned earlier, the elites hate you too. So Tim Keller, about giving up power, this is a very common thing with critical theory, uh, the whole intersectionality, this kind of the hourglass, you're inverting the hourglass as it were, and all the power is now going down to this group of people, POC, people of color. We're all color, ladies and gentlemen. This is not white. Now it's lighter, I understand that. But it's not white. It's just not. I'm sorry. I actually did a video a while back with my well, one of my children, my oldest daughter. I'm more of like a cardboard box. At least that's what the paint swatch told me. So cardboard box, call me that. I identify as not a cardboard box, just cardboard box, tongue in cheek. But <laughs> it, it, it's unhelpful, really. I would, I would argue it's unhelpful because really the real distinctions are, do you know the creator of the universe or not? The one who upholds all things by the word of his power. Have you been washed? of your sin? Have you been forgiven? If you haven't, then you're an unbeliever. You don't know Christ. You don't know the Jesus who came into the world to save sinners. The Jesus who was born for Christmas or in why we celebrate Christmas. You don't know this Jesus. If you do know this Jesus, you are in Christ. So it doesn't matter whether you're from Ghana or South Africa or Brazil or Mexico or Canada or North Korea or Afghanistan, or Russia, or China, or anywhere else, if you know the Creator, because everyone everywhere should repent, Jesus says. And what does he say here? Save save those who believe. The Bible, the New Testament in particular, is replete with this is who people are, either in Christ or outside of Christ. Turn to Christ. There isn't any sort of pray five times a day, face this certain city, do this certain thing, go on a two-year mission, nothing. All it is, is repenting and believing, believing the gospel. And so often, guys like Tim Keller don't do that. They want to be polished and clean and seen in the world's eyes. But what does Paul say to Tim Keller? Because the Bible is alive and active. He's speaking to Tim Keller, I believe, right now. That doesn't mean he had Tim Keller in his mind. That's not what I'm saying. The Holy Spirit uses these words and applies them to our, our hearts when we read it, when we study it, and we we. Uh, seek understanding. For the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. So people who are perishing, notice there's this process, just like being saved, there's this ongoing thing, as it were. But it doesn't mean there's only they're perishing and they can't ever come to Christ, because you were once perishing if you're now a Christian, and so was I. I was once walking toward destruction. 
marching in it, singing my little song, doing my little thing, living my own little way. And so were you, if you're a Christian, if you know Christ. I'm not talking about denominations. I'm not talking about Baptists or Presbyterian or Methodists or anything. non denom No. I'm not talking about all the little pet peeves and all the little doctrinal whatever. You will have the right doctrine if you have the right Christ. And so often, Tim Keller and many others like him don't have the right Christ. Now, am I saying he's not safe? I'm not saying that. Maybe he is. Maybe he isn't. I don't know. I don't know his heart. But when you say giving up power, what he's doing is he's signaling those who hate Christ and love the prince of darkness. I know that's harsh words, but that's what they're doing. That's what he's doing. Because he's saying, well, give up power. Well, did you give up power to a POC? Did you give up power to a minority? Did you give up power to a woman? Did you give up power to a trans, blah, 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 fill in the blank, midget, whatever? A super oppressed intersectional person? No, you didn't. And neither did Danny Aiken and many others who have said, oh, I'm going to give up power. It's all about giving up power. We need, to, we need to have a seat at the table. We need to hear voices. We need to have blah, blah, blah. No, that's all the world. It doesn't mean we don't seek to love each other. That doesn't mean we don't seek to treat other people the way we want to be treated. It doesn't mean we don't give preference to other people. Paul goes on about being sued. Why not be wrong? Why not suffer wrong? Jesus says, turn the other cheek. There's on and on and on. But there's this level of also going on the offensive with the gospel and saying, Jesus is better. He's bigger than your sin. He's infinitely better. And Tim Keller this is just, at best, a confusing statement, at worst, it's heresy. Because you're saying, look, I, I, don't, I don't really care much about Jesus, the cross, you know, whatever. He's trying to be all winsome and neat and cool. But it's foolishness to the world, okay? It's, it's not, you can't make the cross all fancy and nuanced. Because then Paul quotes the Old Testament in verse 19 and then goes 20. Where's the wise person? Where's the scribe? The scribe, obviously knowing the scripture really well, the theologians of the day, probably the Tim Kellers, the big Eva guys. And mark this, the Pharisees were big Eva <laughs> of Jesus' day, I would, I would argue very strongly. Because they knew the right thing to do. They have the platform. They have the respect. And what they're doing, they're full of dead men's bones. Let that sink in for a moment. Giving up power. Again, I know, I know it's probably a little bit longer video. I didn't want to shoot for this long, but it is what it is. Hope you're still watching. If you're not, that's okay. You don't know that I said this. But if you are, don't turn off. Giving up power. Like, does he mean Jesus gave up power? Right? He did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but he emptied himself taking the form of a bondservant? Because you could just quote that, Keller. You didn't quote any scripture. And that's the problem. You could, you could quote scripture. You could just go through the Gospels. You could go through Corinthians. You could go through Romans. You could go through 1 John. And all of that would be exponentially better than what this nonsense is. But the sad thing is, this isn't the only tweet. He tweets, and I'm not even, like I said, I'm not even on Twitter. I don't follow him. I don't care really that much. I care a little bit. Because the problem is, so many people both in the world and even in, you know, Little Eva or um, second and third string Big Eva, we'll call it that. They want to get in the game and they're ready and they're stretching and they're this and that. You know, the guys that, that interview um, these people, and I do interviews, ironically enough, um, and they have the things and they write the little book and they do this thing and that thing and they're trying to work their way up in the seminary or in the college or whatever. And there's nothing wrong with that necessarily, but what, it, what there is wrong with in the sense that people want to have this power, right? And it's so ironic that these people who are talking about giving up power have the most power and you don't see them giving it up. So just like politicians, leftist politicians, whether they're Democrat or Republican, people who hate freedom and liberty, they don't want you to have power. They want you to give up power. And that's what communism is. You give up your stuff. You give up your power. We're all equal here. I mean, like, <clears throat> I mean, you know, except for me. You know, uh, uh, hold on real quick. I'm going to drink my clean water. You guys have to find some creek water. Right? That's the whole paradigm. And there's millions of dead bodies stacked up because of that. Just over the last 20, uh, 20th century. Okay? And 
there's never this, oh, give up power. We're all in this together. We've heard this a lot the last two years, right? 20 months, whatever. We're in this together. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're a hypocrite just like everybody else. That's another video, so I'm not even going to go there. The point is, the cross is not about giving up power unless he's talking about Jesus thinking, saying, talking about the uh, the verse of whatever it is. Let me see. Let me just find it. Why not? Because I've got the World Wide Web right in front of me. A thing to be grasped. Let's see. But he emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant. This is where you have to... There it is. Philippians 2.7. He made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant. Really, slave. But we don't like that term in our modern day. <clears throat> I was born a human being. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. So if that's what he's talking about, fine. But then he should say, Jesus, add Christ in there. Because all you're doing is having this weird, winsome sort of like, yeah, that guy's really a Christian. You know, you know that whole fundamentalist thing from, your, from my gram, grandma down in Texas or in Nebraska or, you know, my parents' religion who used to live in Kentucky, blah, 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 blah. No, not that religion. Tim Keller, he's cool. He's a pastor in New York City. This is the greatest city in the world. He's not a hypocrite. He's not a fundamentalist. He's not a freak. He's just like me. I certainly, certainly hope that Tim Keller is not just like the unbeliever. I certainly hope not. By the way, Tim Keller has cancer. Um, and that's and we should pray for him for that. Um, because that's part of the curse. That's, 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 a, that's a bad thing. It's not good. And I hope he gets better. Um, but I also hope he will recant and change his mind on a number of these things that has been adopting for years the liberation and critical theory ideology and all these other things that so easily confuse the gospel, muddle it, water it down, and it has no power to say. Hope you found this helpful. I really do. Um, I love Tim Keller as a man overall. Um, I think he's probably done more good than bad. The problem is there's so much junk like this that's just confusing. And you're trying to be winsome, Tim Keller. You're trying to do these cool, nuanced things, and yet it's not helpful. What would be helpful is knowing the people, which maybe you do, but then applying the scripture to them, not just saying off-the-cuff weird things like the cross is about giving up power. What does that even mean? Other than something critical theory-ish, intersectionality-ish of inverting the paradigm of, well, these people worked for this power and they just so happen to have less melanin than these people, but we should just give it to them because they didn't work for it. And they're oppressed, quote unquote. That's not Christianity. That's not the gospel. That's not in the scripture at all. Paul says to slaves, don't worry about it if you're a slave. But if you can get your freedom, great, all the better. But like, don't worry about it. Don't seek to be free. Oh, that hurts some people. Oh, I just don't like that. Nails on the chalkboard. I don't want to hear that. Well, that's in the Bible. What else don't you want to hear in the Bible? What else? That's the question. Anyway, I hope you found this helpful, like I said. Uh, if you did, like and share and um, subscribe if you haven't already. As I mentioned already, it helps basically kind of get more momentum as the bus continues to drive faster. As it were, it will pick up speed as it gets more momentum and more momentum, more speed and so on. So like and subscribe if you haven't already and uh, we'll see you tomorrow, all right? Or maybe eh, the next day. I won't have a video tomorrow. All right, see ya.